Hi everyone! I haven't made a tutorial video in a long time and oh god did I change my ways since then. <laughs> um, I for one switched programs but I also learned a few tricks as well. Uh, today I will show you how I go about this type of drawings that you can see on the screen. And I have a few different ways to draw but this is one of the most brain dead and relaxing I can do. It's very enjoyable and it's not too hard too if you also want to try. Alright, so the first step is to make something to color. You want to draw a character, an animal, a plant or an object. It doesn't matter, you do what you feel like doing. So you begin by sketching a little roughly and once you've laid out the essentials, you can open a new layer and trace a cleaner outline on top of it. This part where you do the outline is the part where I usually applicate myself the most. It's the part where I focus the most because you want a, a clean outline. Unlike when you sketch the drawing where you can go about it very roughly and you don't need to pay attention to detail as much. Now I forgot to name my layer so it may be hard to follow me, I'm sorry. But on the side you can see that I currently have three. One for the white background, one for the rough sketch and one for the cleaner outline. I always keep the background and rough sketch at the bottom most if I don't end up deleting the sketch part. Then I place my new layer in between the outline and the bottom ones. The layers are separated by color or parts of the drawing, such as the skin, the hairs, the piece of clothing. I'm aware that this method is not the fastest, it actually takes time, but it reminds me of some sort of paint by numbers and I've always found that to be therapeutic. So when I go about making the layers, I always keep in mind what parts are on top of what, for most of the layer positioning I decide to make. Let me make myself more clear. So basically, I start with the skin layer, then think hairs are over the skin, they can pass in front of the face and all, so I put the hair layer on top of the skin layer. For later details, it always helps to think about how you position your layers so that you don't need to retouch again and again afterwards. But that entirely depends on you. What I mean is that in this drawing, I will end up putting the clothing layers under the skin, although it is technically over it. But clothes, unless it's fur, is not something that will pass over the character's skin, unless I want to adjust it later. But then again, it is entirely up to you what you want to do and how you want to figure it out. Now that you have a base color everywhere in your drawing, comes a technique quite nifty. So first you have to visualize your light source. On what side is my shadow, on what side is my light. I decided my light would be where he's looking at. So here's the trick. With the magic wand, select your color. Make sure you're on the layer of your color. And with that selection, you can do any maneuvers without crossing the outline. One specific maneuver that really kickstarts my drawing is the gradient tool. Again, Keeping in mind my light source, I toss in a lighter light and voila! Free, almost complete shading. Um, well, at least it does give something nice looking. Then, with your brush at a low opacity, you can touch up the shadows and give form to your sub... So I like to start with giving a first gradient to all of my drawing to visualize how the shadows interact together and see if I'm satisfied so that I can go in with the details. There's still no background and by looking at the picture you can feel that he has a spotlight on his face coming from a low point. Like uh, if it was downtime or dusk. Now for the detailing and textures there are techniques you can use however I haven't used them in this drawing and will not be mentioning them much for today. But basically one of the techniques consists in taking a picture of a texture like leather hairs, or other things that could remind of skin's uh, pores. Then, you place the picture on your character, warp it into place with a transformation tool, and then change its hue to match the drawing before reducing the opacity of that picture's layer. If you're ever looking for a translation to all I just said, uh, I've made a reference sheet that you can look at. Just look in the description, you'll find it there. And um, by the way, there's no shame in not knowing the terms already. Uh, I mean, we all have to start somewhere. And also, 
Don't worry if I skip parts of the drawings. The full time lapse is already available. On when you're satisfied with your overall shading, we can jump to the next step. Okay, so when you don't want to invest too much time doing a background, here's a quick way to get something satisfying regardless. So first, create a new layer under your character, and then think about where your character stands. For example, I pictured mine standing in nature. And what does nature have? Pretty much green tones. And the green that I want to make, I want it to make it darker, to make it seem like he's in a denser area of green. So with that in mind, I start scribbling some random spots of greens to remind us of leaves or bushes. Then I pick a lighter color, such as a yellow green, to mark the areas that would be hit by more light. And once I have a general layout of my vegetation, I blur all that. What it does is that it pushes the background, well, into the background, and it suggests a lot more details. Now, I also kept in mind that outside we have a sky, so on a layer under the blurry green, I added an a simple gradient of blue. And to top it all off, I made a layer over the green and added a yellow source of light with small trims to show where it reflects the most, and then blur that as well. And there you have quite the result in no more than four minutes. And now the last step, enhancing the shadows. So what I like to make is a layer right under the outlines that I set to multiply. And then I choose a bluish color and proceed to make shadows. By reducing the opacity or choosing the right hue of blue, you can get a very nice finish to your shadows. It brings even more depth to the drawing. And this is how I completed my drawing. So. I could have tried to modify the outline colors or reduce their opacity, but I really enjoyed the result. I hope you do too, and if that was helpful, well, then I'm glad. Have a nice day, and some good-